Hi guys, Pastor Larry here again today, and today I want to talk to you about forgiveness. My wife and I were traveling the other day, and she made mention, or she spoke something to me that I had to write down because it's so true, and it just triggered this thought in my mind that I need to get on, uh, get this teaching out there because there's a lot of people suffering and struggling from not knowing how to forgive or not knowing even what it means. And here's what she said. She said, how quick we accept and expect to receive God's forgiveness when we mess up, when we screw up in life. But how about when God expects us to forgive others who may have hurt, harmed, or offended us sometime in life? When he expects us to forgive them and release them, it all of a sudden becomes a whole different story, doesn't it? Well, I want to talk to you about what forgiveness is, what forgiveness isn't. If you happen to have my book called, uh, there you go, Pain is Showing. Your pain is showing. If you have that book, I want you to go out and look at page 187. There's where I go into some pretty in-depth teaching on forgiveness, what it is, what it isn't, how you do it, how to, how to forgive from the heart. And that's what I want to talk to you about here today. But let me talk to you quickly about the whole act of forgiveness and what happens. There's a certain phrase in here that I think I want to t help you understand. This is all based on scripture from uh, Matthew 18 verses 21 through 35 where the Peter said, Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often do I have to forgive my brother? How often do I have to forgive him? And up to seven times. And Jesus <laughs> probably chuckled and said, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. 490 times probably a day, I suppose, if somebody wants to mess with your mind. But God's expecting you and I to forgive. God's expecting you and I to give mercy to others. Listen to James chapter 2, verse 13, which talks about mercy versus judgment. And when we're unwilling to forgive, we're really involved in judgment. Listen to this warning. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. You want God to be merciful to you? You and I have to be merciful to those around us. And in, in reality, being merciful and forgiving and releasing is all uh, just makes life so much sweeter, uh, so, much, so much nicer than to carry these stinking grudges and all this stuff in our back of our mind. Well, let me go ahead and continue to talk about this teaching. This is about the unjust servant. You know the story. Uh, back in the day when this was written, uh, the custom was if a man was a deep in debt and he couldn't pay his debt or didn't pay his debt, then they would uh, move in. The creditors would move in, sell everything he had, including his family, actually serve, uh, sell them to slavery to pay for the man's debt. But this man cried out to God and said, Lord, or cried out to the servant. <clears throat> and, and said, please, don't do this. It, it, give me another chance. I will pay you all if you give me another chance. So the, the, the master had mercy on him. And uh, what what this guy do? He, he phew, wiped the sweat off his brow, went about his business, and then he ran into a friend of his that owed him a few bucks. You know, <laughs> it would be like you owe in the bank 150, 200,000 or 300,000 or more, and then the bank forgiving you, uh, and giving you more time, and then you run into a guy that, owe you owe, or that owes you five dollars, and what'd he do? He took the guy by the neck and threatened him and told him to pay him, or he was going to throw him in jail. Well, the guy actually did. Threw him in jail for the measly four or five dollars that he owed him. Well, the rest of the servants saw that and said, that is unjust. How can he be that short-sighted? <clears throat> you know, don't you remember what your master just did for you? Well, they told the master, and the master came to him, and here's where I want to pick up. I want to pick up on, on verse 33, 34 and 35 of Matthew uh, 20, or Matthew 18, I'm so sorry. It says, should you not have, this is the servant, this is Jesus speaking to us, but should you not have also had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? He's talking to that unjust servant. He said, shouldn't you have had some compassion and mercy on this guy like I had on you? And uh, his master got angry then. See, he said his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers. There's the word I want you to get. Delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. And verse 35 says, so my heavenly father also will do to you 
if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. What in the world is he talking about? What's God doing sicking the torturers on to us? That's what I want to talk to you about. And I also want to talk quickly about how do you forgive from the heart? There's where you need to read this book. There's where you need to see page 187 in your pain is showing. <clears throat> because I talk about how to forgive from the heart. It's not just a mental thing. Okay, God, I forgive. I have to forgive. I'll forgive. No, it actually takes you back to the offense where in your memory, in your mind, you are experiencing that same offense or that same hurt again. And in that process, you're asking God, you're pulling on God, and he'll help you forgive from that position. That's from the heart. That's from the gut, from the basis of where you were hurt. But let's talk about what he's talking about here when he talks about the torturers. Surely you should have mercy on you. If being you didn't have mercy on this person, then I'm going to sick the torturers on you. Well, what is the torturers? That's a good question. Glad you asked. The torturers. I want you to think about, have you ever held a grudge against somebody? Have you ever been angry at somebody? Uh, couldn't seem to find peace. Just every time you saw that person, it would just aggravate the not right out of you. Have you ever had that situation? Have you ever been in a situation where just the mention of that person's name or that group's name or whatever it was, just the mention of the name just kind of ooh, ate at you on the inside? That's the torturers. The torturers is, is actually what's going on in your mind. It's actually what bitterness and anger does to us. It constantly eats away at our mind. It constantly eats away at our emotional realm. It constantly keeps our attention on the person who offended us. And we think we can justify or uh, we can manage this situation by dealing with it ourselves. And all the while, that person who offended you continues to be in control of your life. Think about it. You want the person who hurt you to continue to control your life? Then don't forgive them. Let me tell you what forgiveness is. Well, let's say what it is not first. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. Forgiveness is not admitting that you were hurt. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not saying, hey, it's okay, what you did is okay, and it's so, so it's no big deal. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. Well, I'll let you out of jail free. I'll let you go because, you know, after all, I'm supposed to. Nope, that's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is, number one, trusting God with the situation and the person who hurt you. Trusting God. You see, God or you are going to be the Lord over that issue. And if you're not forgiving, then you're saying to God, I don't need your help. I'll be the Lord over it. I'll take care of it. But God says, the scriptures say right here, so my heavenly Father will do to you. He'll sick the tortures. The tortures will torment you if you don't from your heart forgive this person. See, <clears throat> And that's what's happening when you are driven to constantly control your mind, your thinking, your actions. When, when this person or persons or the situation comes to mind, it just constantly eats away at you. Those are the tortures, friends. It's not demonic. But it's all in your head. It's in you. It's what bitterness, it's what anger does when you're unwilling to say, God, I trust you. And here's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is releasing it to God. Lord Jesus, I can't deal with this any longer. Would you please help me forgive such and so or this situation? Lord, I choose to forgive them because I believe, what do you believe? I always lead people to say, I believe they had no clue what they were really doing to me. Maybe you think they do have a clue what they were doing to you. But let me ask you this. If you actually knew what your words and your actions actually did in the depths of other people's hearts, I guarantee you there are things you would not say or do. And you don't mean to add offense. You don't mean to be mean or <laughs> anything. But it's just how we humans act and how we humans, we always respond to our, by our feelings and many times don't even give a second thought about what we just said or how we acted towards somebody when we didn't, didn't intend to offend them. 
uh, go out to my YouTube teaching. I've got a YouTube teaching out there on dealing with offenses. Many times you take an offense to something that wasn't even intended to offend. I, I know people have come to me and told me I've offended them and there was no intent to offend anybody at the time. But we worked through it and they got freedom and I got freedom. But you see, forgiveness is releasing to God the whole issue and the pain of it. And it's actually following Jesus' example on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They didn't know what they did. I'll guarantee you most people that have hurt you one time or another in life or people that you may be holding an odd against or offense against, I'll guarantee you they did not know what they were doing to the depths of you either. And so you've got to get to the place in life where you trust God. Lord, I trust you. I'm not here to say they didn't hurt me because they did hurt me. I'm not here to get them, give them a get-out-of-jail-free card. Lord, I'm here to give me a get-out-of-jail-free card. I'm tired of the torturers. I'm tired of this mess. You see, God is unable to even affect that person in accordance with what they did to you until you release him to God, him or her or them. God can't, God can't be God over that issue till you give him permission. Here it is, again, making Jesus Lord, giving him permission to deal with the issue that's hurt you or that you've, you've taken offense on or you felt like it. I've, I've had opportunities to lead people in an offense uh, or forgiving people. And uh, many times the Lord will even remind them of, of maybe an offense they created in somebody else. And at that very moment, you know, then you have the opportunity to pray for the others who may be suffering as well but the key is to clean out your heart the key is to not allow those torturers to take over because i'm telling you it's miserable you can't sleep you can't wake up first thing in the morning who's on your mind the issues on your mind you may have not you may not have thought about it for many many years and just this teaching may be bringing to mind some issues that you need to deal with well don't be angry at me uh, i don't even want you to be angry i want you to just go right to god i want you to quiet your mind go to god lord jesus would you help me forgive this issue? Look at the issue that caused the problem. And then you'll feel him come alongside. You'll feel the Lord right there. Then Jesus, I choose to forgive this person because I didn't know or I believe they didn't know how badly they hurt me. Or I believe they didn't have a clue what they were doing. Or whatever words you feel would really release this. And then Jesus, I give them to you. I give this issue to you. And I ask you to please take my anger and my bitterness away so I can be free. Then you just watch that issue quietly. Keep your mind on it. And then you'll feel Jesus tug on your heart. You'll feel a tug on your heart. You'll feel a little pressure in your chest. And when that happens, take a deep breath. Oh, and let it go as you relax and as you exhale. Relax the inside. Let him pull that out. He's pulling it out, but he can't take what you don't give him. And as long as you feel that tugging on your heart or that little pressure in your chest, he's still working. So you keep taking those deep breaths and you let it go. Get rid of the, uh, of the material that's causing the torturers to run your life. That's called forgiveness from the heart. Read, your pain is showing. I go into in-depth teaching on that. And uh, I think it would be a blessing to you. You can get that on Amazon or you can get it at my website, LarryLow.com. But go in there and learn and, and experience some freedom, friends, because you can't live at peace when you've got odd against people, when you've got struggles against people. And there may be people that have really hurt you. I would deal with a lot of hurting people whose, whose parents, for instance, or whose family or close friends have absolutely ab abandoned, rejected a lot of things, tortured. I've dealt with people who have been tortured by their own mother and father. And they had to do the same thing. They had to forgive, release, so that God could take it. And when they did, their life began anew. I had one person say, it's like being born again, again. This is so awesome. And so friends, take, take my advice and get into that situation and let Jesus release you. If you have any questions, comment below. If you have any, if it works and you find it works, I know it works. I've been doing this 30 some years, helping hundreds and hundreds of people. So I know darn well it works. So if it's not working for you, comment below. Give me an email. MentorLarryLow at gmail.com. Email me so that I can help you. I want you to be free 
so that you can live the promised peace and victory that Jesus paid for for you. So, comment below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. I post every Tuesday. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. God bless you, friends. Live in peace. Live quietly. And live a life of following God.